Chapter 20 The Showdown in the Sky The other dueling hearts watched from far below as Joe and the Reaper attacked each other in earnest. Even from so far away, despite being able to see the entire field of battle at once, even the sharpest eyes in the group were impressed by the feats of speed that they witnessed. They had trouble following the action, all save for Karen, whose eyes darted rapidly in step with the two combatants. Her expression was intense, colored with worry, though whether she was worried for the safety of herself and her two longtime friends, worried for Joe's safety, or both, it was hard to tell. Joe and the Reaper zipped deftly along the steel beams of the unfinished building that was their battlefield. Neither of them seemed to need to think about where to put their feet, but the Reaper had the advantage of actually not having to worry much about his footing. His soul-conjured smoke could hold him aloft. Joe didn't have the same luxury. Her soul did help her feet grip the steel that was her stage, but if she misstepped and didn't find the beam at all, she would fall, and yet she never faltered. She moved with ferocity and zeal, taking any chance and pressing any advantage. She moved with purpose, taking each step with confidence, guided by instinct. They struck out whatever they could, and yet neither fighter took any damage. The Reaper protected himself by becoming smoke often, for just long enough to let Joe's attacks pass through him, and Joe protected herself by moving so fast with her shadow step that, for the moment of its use, each and every time she used it, she actually became as intangible as a shadow herself. Finally, their exchange came to a head, enough soul built between the two of them that it exploded outward, pushing them apart. Both fighters stumbled, but the Reaper, purely by luck, took longer to recover his footing. Joe seized this opportunity, putting a huge amount of soul into her right hand. She launched herself at her opponent, putting all of her strength and all of her weight into an arcing downward strike. The Reaper saw her coming, just soon enough to turn to smoke at the very last moment and spread out around her attack. Naturally, Joe missed. She overextended, punching the steel beam beneath her with so much force that it bent and buckled. She recoiled, flexing her hand. Some of her fingers had been broken, for sure, but she simply didn't care. There would be time to feel pain later, after her mom was safe again. The Reaper reformed right on top of Joe. The very moment he did, he drew a knife in each of his hands and struck as Joe was still assessing her injury. She deflected one strike off of her hand and avoided the other, but the Reaper had put her off guard again between his last moment of recovery and his continued jerky movements. Where they had appeared for much of the fight to be on equal footing, now, suddenly, the Reaper had managed to pull just a half step ahead. Joe was able to keep up her defense, but she couldn't return the favor. The momentum had shifted, and she didn't see any easy way to shift it back. She did, however, see a fast way. The Reaper struck once more with each of his knives, and rather than dedicate her hands to deflecting them both, Joe deflected one of them wide, but allowed the other one to hit her. He struck her in the upper abdomen, sending pain shooting throughout her entire body. Joe made a point of charging her torso with as much soul as she could. The injury was much shallower than it could have been, and she could even ignore it for a while. Meanwhile, she struck with her free hand, catching the Reaper off guard, smashing her palm directly into his face. The Reaper was knocked back. Reflexively, he released his grip on his knives. One of them fell far, sticking point down into the ground below. The other remained stuck in Joe's flesh. Without a second thought, Joe pulled the knife free and twirled it, getting a feel for it, and then wielding it in her left hand. The Reaper drew two more knives from his shirt pouch, and he renewed his assault. But Joe countered with a level of finesse that was a surprise even to herself. She deflected both thrusts of her opponent's knives with a single swing of her own, turned on her heel, and drove her right elbow into the side of the Reaper's head. Falling from their metal stage, but he spread his arms, adjusting the direction of his fall, and landed gracefully on another beam ten or so feet below the first. Joe dropped down next to him a moment later, and their clash continued. Immediately the two fighters fell into rhythm again, dancing around each other just as they had before, but things weren't the same as they'd been. Joe continued to ignore the effects of her wound, but she was still aware of it, and aware that, as much as she was moving, she had already lost a good amount of blood. She was literally willing it closed, but eventually soul wouldn't be enough to keep her going at full capacity anymore. She would weaken, and her opponent would pull too far ahead of her, leaving her with no choice but to lose. She couldn't allow that eventuality to come, so, mid-strike, she compelled her energies to mix and magnify. The life energy that was generated stimulated the area of her wound, lessening the pain and even causing it to heal a bit immediately. Meanwhile, Joe split focus and seized hold of the newly generated soul with her will, wrapping herself in it, causing her wild black and purple aura to spring into existence around her. She fainted and put her greatly enhanced speed to work, darting back and forth along the length of the steel beam, leaving a parade of latent images in her opponent's eye. Acting before the Reaper could pin down her actual location, she circled the entire building, generating momentum, and then launched herself at him. 
She struck with both of her closed fists at once, with as much strength as she could muster, but she was just an instant too slow. Realizing that he'd lost sight of his opponent, that she intended to attack, and that he couldn't be sure where she would attack him from, the Reaper fell back upon his most versatile defense. He became smoke again, just in time for Joe to sail right through him, blasting his smoky form far apart until it was only a thin fog. Joe slid to a stop at the far end of the steel beam, turned again on her heel, and then saw that her opponent was already reconstituting himself. Despite her apparent failure, she smiled and sent Soul down along her arm into her outstretched right hand. It built quickly into a massive, crackling ball that swelled and then condensed down into the ultra-dense, violently spinning attack that was quickly becoming her signature ranged option. She called out, Soul Breaker, and then threw the blast at the place where the Reaper's form was coalescing. She tried to time it so that the blast would reach the Reaper just as he solidified again, but as it spiraled toward him, she realized that either he had seen the attack coming and held back from reforming, or she had timed the attack too early. Rather than striking a newly solid Reaper, it blasted his smoky self apart again, sailing through him and hitting another segment of the unfinished building. The blast expanded upon impact, tearing right through the metal and stone of the structure, causing the entire side of it to crumble. Rather than let herself get distracted by her mistake, or by her own devastating power, Jo kept her eyes on her smoky opponent, hoping to learn something from the interaction between her attack and his smoke self. Again, he began to coalesce, but interestingly, Joe noticed that he did so much more rapidly this time. Joe felt a strange sense of desperation from him as she watched. Immediately, her mind started racing. The Reaper became solid again as Joe allowed her aura to fade. She reached out with her sixth sense, scrutinizing the Reaper, and she felt waves of that same desperation rolling off of him, and a hesitance in the way that he carried himself for a second or so after he regained his original form. For just a moment, he hunched his shoulders, touching the fingers of his left hand to his midsection. It was subtle, so much so that if Joe hadn't been looking for oddities, she wouldn't have noticed it. Then, in an instant, the Reaper went right back to carrying himself as he always did, projecting complete unflappability. It was too late, though. Joe had seen the truth already, and it reminded her of something that had happened to her only recently. When Joe fought the Reaper briefly at the old park, alongside Karen, she had somehow managed to extend her shadow and use it to block an attack. Later, she'd noticed bruises corresponding to that attack on her midsection. Seeing the Reaper react to her Soul Breaker hitting his smoke form, Joe understood now. If a construct of Soul took damage, if that construct was in the shape of the fighter's body or made from it, some of that damage could translate back to the fighter. That meant that even in his smoke form, the Reaper could take damage if he was hit hard enough. He was vulnerable, but he was very skilled at not showing that vulnerability. Joe faced off with her opponent again. She did her best to give off an air of uncertainty, as if she weren't forming the beginnings of a plan at that very moment. Meanwhile, the air stirred between the two fighters as they both gathered up what soul they had left. Each of them felt their opponent preparing to renew their attack, and they reacted, willing their soul to mix with the life energy within them. This time, Joe kept her energies merged for several painful seconds, generating ten times as much soul as she had last time. Her opponent followed her example, generating a huge amount of soul as well. The resulting auras reached like spotlights into the darkening sky. Joe's wild, black and purple aura pushed against the Reaper's ghostly, sickly green one, sending bolts of energy out from where they stood that were powerful enough that they cut trenches into the ground far below, but the two skilled fighters ignored them. They reined their auras in, drawing them in close, and renewed their earlier back and forth. Now, even Karen had trouble following them, and the entire group of spectators was forced to take a few steps back from the ensuing heart-to-heart, -heart, when the excess force from the combatants' strikes proved powerful enough to reach where they stood, cracking the ground. The half-finished building beneath the two fighters shuddered more and more with each passing second, until the beam they were fighting on shook loose of its fittings and collapsed. The two fighters dropped again, falling to the top edge of the nearly finished lower outer wall of the building, and continued their battle without hesitation. They danced their deadly dance all around the upper perimeter of the uneven wall. With each strike, a wave of soul spread from the place where they stood, knocking brick and cement loose from below them, until only the metal frame of the building and a pile of rubble remained. Joe and the Reaper stood upon that pile of rubble, renewing their auras. The debris beneath them floated upward, caught in the vortex of their energies, falling back to the ground with a crack and a thump the moment the two fighters finished building power. The Reaper was silent, keeping up his calm facade, but Joe cried out as the pair moved to clash yet again. Joe's latest outburst of energies had further lessened the severity of her abdominal injury, but continuing to fight just exacerbated it even more, undoing what repair work had been done. Her stomach and the fronts of her thighs were becoming slick with blood. 
and the pain was bad enough that it was beginning to break through Joe's insistence not to feel it. At the same time, with each attack that utilized her damaged right hand, the fractures in her fingers grew worse. Joe found herself favoring her right side, avoiding further damage to her abdomen, and adjusting her stance to attack and defend more often with her left hand and the knife that she still held in it. As a result, she was no longer putting her best foot forward, literally, and it was slowing her down. As Joe's speed began to falter, the Reaper saw an opportunity. He dropped low and thrust upward at Joe's torso with the knives in his hands. Joe stepped back, deflecting the strikes to the side, but they had been just a decoy. As Joe's knife struck against the Reapers, he dropped them, freeing up his hands to bypass Joe's guard when he lunged forward and launched them with one of his odd and jerky strikes, right at Joe's injury. He struck twice in rapid succession, and Joe stumbled. The Reaper pressed his attack, staying low, spinning on his heel, sweeping Joe's feet out from under her. Then he shot up to his full height, spinning again, kicking Joe in the right side inches from her injury, knocking her off of the pile of building debris and into the empty space between the unfinished buildings, where her allies stood watching. She crashed hard into the gravel-lined ground and rolled several feet before coming to a stop, sprawled out and writhing. Even then, the Reaper didn't let up. He sent smoke out from beneath his sleeves to follow Joe as she rolled. As soon as she came to a stop, that smoke pooled around her and shot up, tossing her like a rag doll into the air just as the Reaper smoke-stepped into the space above her, kneeing her in the face, sending her crashing back into the ground so hard that it shattered the earth beneath her. As his attack connected, the Reaper's smoke recoiled from Joe, pooling beneath him, lifting him high above her. He pulled his remaining knives from his shirt pocket and tossed them into the air where they clattered and bounced off of each other, spreading out and hanging in the air under the force of the Reaper's will. They all turned to point at Joe, and they shot toward her like automatic fire. Joe had zero chance of avoiding the attack, and trying to deflect it would still injure her badly. Almost without thinking, she called upon an ability that she had only just discovered. She exerted her will upon her shadow, peeling it from the ground, stretching it, and curling it around herself, forming it into a dome. The knives struck the shadow shield with heavy thuds, embedding themselves deep within it. Joe felt every impact, suffering injuries across her body, but those injuries were far less lethal than they would have been, feeling more like hard punches. Joe, despite being battered, bloody, and bruised, stood up within the center of her dome shield. As she did, the dome split into multiple shadowy tendrils, each one gripping one of the Reaper's knives. With a cry of frustration and pain, Joe thrust her fists toward the Reaper with all of her strength. The shadowy tendrils reacted to her passion and her will, reaching out with the speed of her shadow step, thrusting all of the Reaper's knives at once at his still hovering form with the strength of Joe's own aura-charged arms. He became smoke again, allowing the knives to pass through him, but Joe wouldn't let that stop her. Rather than a big, flashy soul breaker, Joe had another attack in mind this time. Her tendrils melted back into her shadow as the Reaper reformed, and the moment he did, Joe brought her left arm around in an arch and threw the knife that she still held with all of her strength. It flew true, embedding deep into the Reaper's chest. Becoming smoke, it interrupted the Reaper's aura, and the knife had hit before he could completely reassert it, so he took full damage from the impact. The pillar of smoke holding the Reaper up collapsed, and he fell hard, crumbling to the ground, but he stumbled back up almost immediately. He pulled the knife free of his flesh and tossed it aside, dropping hard to his knees and bracing himself against the ground with both hands, refusing to fall any further. He was resilient, but even in the late evening light, Joe could see blood streaming from the wound. He was hurt even worse than she was. With an injury that bad, he couldn't possibly continue. Joe walked toward the Reaper and said, You can't keep fighting like that. Surrender, and we'll see about stabilizing your... Before she could say anything else, though, Joe was stunned to silence when the Reaper pushed himself up onto his feet and straightened to his full height. I'm impressed, he told her. Using my own weapons against me was a stroke of genius, but it'll take more than that to put me out of commission. To hammer this point home, the Reaper reached down and pulled apart a cut in his hoodie over the left side of his abdomen. Beneath that cut was a deep, jagged scar that looked several weeks old. This, the Reaper explained, is where your mother stabbed me through the torso earlier today. He reached up and pulled open the new hole in his shirt where Joe had just stabbed him, and she was taken aback to see that the wound already looked several days old. It was beginning to close, and it already wasn't bleeding at all anymore. The Reaper tilted his head so that Joe could see his mouth behind the shadow of his hood, and he smiled wide, explaining, One of the abilities of my soul is that I heal very fast. I can speed up the process by channeling soul, but it happens completely independent of my will and takes zero effort. I know you saw through my act, he said, that you know that severe enough attacks can injure me even through my smoke form. But with this ability, any damage I take in that form disappears almost instantly after I become solid again. Even damage that I sustain when I'm not smoke barely slows me down. 
You would have to do so much damage to me all at once that it incapacitates me immediately in order to defeat me. And we're simply too close to potential for that to be within your power. Your mother wasn't even able to do that much damage before I could defeat her, and her power eclipses yours by magnitudes. The Reaper's smile widened. So, maybe you're the one who should surrender? Joe took a step back from her opponent, and then another when he started laughing. Her aura flickered. She was suddenly very aware of her many injuries. She had thought that she was giving as good as she was getting, but knowing that that wasn't true shook her to her core. She was right back where she'd been after her first encounter with the Reaper in the woods, wondering if it was even possible to defeat him at all. It was a mindset that didn't do her any favors. While Joe hesitated, the Reaper renewed his attack. He was relentless, gliding forward on rolling smoke and striking again and again with swift, knife-handed thrusts. He struck Joe in her stomach, her abdominal wound, her celiac plexus, her throat, and finally her face. Joe stumbled back and the Reaper lunged past her, grasping her face in his right hand, lifting her clear off of her feet and slamming her into the dirt. Then he kicked her while she was down, sending her tumbling away. She ended up sprawled out, face down, her aura finally collapsing, gasping as she struggled to lift herself back up. Casually, as if this were all routine for him, the Reaper reached out with his smoky tendrils and grasped his many knives, drawing them all back to him so he could scatter them once again throughout the air. Joe stumbled to her feet. Her shadow writhed, but she was too weak to create her shadow shield again. Instead, as the knives rained down on her, she tried to shadow step but she misstepped. One of the knives clipped her leg, slowing her down, allowing two more to graze her face and her left shoulder, and a fourth to lodge itself in her right arm. She dropped to her knees, unable to even lift her head. Joe could hear the gasps and the murmurs of her teammates. Waves of fear rolled off of Rocky and Kimmy, who had never seen a heart-to-heart -heart as violent as this one. Rounding them out, though, was Sarah's cold anger and Tucker's fiery rage, which were a familiar comfort to Joe. They were almost enough to inspire her to keep going all on their own but she was distracted and surprised to sense a rage almost as intense that she didn't recognize at all. With effort, Joe turned her head toward the source of the sensation, and her eyes fell upon Karen, who was glaring at the Reaper with such intensity that it seemed impossible that he couldn't feel it. Joe was surprised to see so much seething, passionate rage in the other girl's eyes, directed at Joe's attacker, especially after Joe had sprung her risky plan on Karen and her friends without warning. It reminded Joe that she had never actually seen Karen mad before. It was oddly alluring. Even as the Reaper retracted his knives again, prepared to finish his helpless opponent with a final barrage, all thoughts of that coming danger were driven from Joe's mind. She was reminded, in that moment, of what defeat would mean above and beyond the obvious. If Joe lost, no matter what exactly it was that came next, then that would be it. Joe would never see Karen again. It was absurd, but even with everything else that was at stake, it was that thought which Joe found the most motivating. It ignited a spark in her that cascaded through her psyche, reigniting her single-minded desire to beat the Reaper, whether she should be able to or not. The Reaper loosed his knives at Joe, but while she looked up at them, she didn't see them. Instead, she turned her focus inward. The world outside of her body seemed to slow to a crawl as Joe did the unthinkable. She decided to bet everything on a technique that she'd only just learned, that didn't even come from within her own soul, one that came complete with its own dangers. Ignoring how much greater those dangers were in her current state, and how reckless this idea was to begin with, Joe mixed her energies just enough to create a spark that she sent into her right hand, forming a weak, flickering aura around it. The soul in that aura reached out past Joe's hand, stretching out and flattening down, shimmering such that it almost didn't seem like it was there. It hovered just past her hand, solidifying into a glassy, purple, uneven, double-edged blade with little flecks within it that shimmered either black or gold, depending on how the light hit them. For a moment, Joe marveled that she had succeeded. She had risked her entire self, and she had made that risk pay off. She hadn't even felt any resistance from the technique. Then that moment passed, and Joe's senses reconnected with the outside world, and the Reaper's knives were already upon her. Without even thinking about it, Joe sent Soul into her newly formed Soul Shear, and she swung it across the path of the incoming knives. Energy spiraled off the edge of the blade, flying in multiple directions, knocking the knives away. Joe stood up on rubbery legs and raised her new weapon to point at her opponent. That she was armed as well shouldn't have made much of a difference, and yet Joe could feel that things had changed. She finally had a chance.